Hello everyone, do you have an old laptop with a floppy drive that doesn't work anymore? Today I will be showing how to fix the external floppy drives that came with Toshiba laptops. To do this, I will be using a few things. Machine oil to lubricate the drive, isopropyl alcohol, and few tips to clean the head. Now I'm going to open the drive. First, I remove any discs that may be still inside and cables that are still attached. Then I bend the three tabs on the bottom of the drive. This opens the back of the drive, but there's two more tabs on the inside of the drive that need to be wiggled around to loosen. A previous attempt years ago broke one of those tabs, so there's only one left here. Once that's open, there's two uh, sheets that can be taken off and set to the side. And then we have the drive. And there's the second tab that broke off. Flipping the drive over, this is the top of the drive. It's secured by four screws that I removed. Then there's two tabs on each side. I use a small screwdriver to pop them up and take the cover off. Now we're inside and this is the bare drive. This is good enough for just lubricating the drive and cleaning the heads. But since this drive is broken, we need to go further. I unscrew the two screws holding the motor in place. Now I carefully wedge the top part of the drive out. I pull up slightly on the head so that it doesn't get caught. These older floppy drives are driven by a belt. Over time, the belt loosens and becomes gooey. At least this one is still intact, so I gingerly remove it. I was able to get replacements from a website called console5.com, link in the description below. These bands have the right thickness, but they're a little bit too tight. I carefully wrap the new belt around the motor and follow the same path that the old belt had. As you can see, the belt is really tight and I had some trouble. Be careful that the motor does not become detached. Once everything seems to be in place, I double check that the belt is still around the motor and I put the motor back in place. Now I test spin the moving parts to make sure that they move freely. Here's when I notice that the belt is actually a bit too tight, but I go ahead and reassemble the top of the drive. The top of the drive slides under the head and also under the little tab coming out from the motor. In addition, there's a little spring that needs to also be tucked in. That spring keeps the door closed when there's not a disc in the drive. Now that the top of the drive seems to be back in place, I put the two screws back in that hold the motor in place. Now that the drive has been reassembled, I lubricate some of the places using machine oil. First, I lubricate the screw that controls the position of the head. This is often the first failure point of these floppy drives. Then 
then I lubricate the two sides. These are the tracks that the head runs on. Now I test the open and close mechanism by sliding in a disc and popping it back out. Before putting the shell back together, I want to clean the head. I put some isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip, then carefully lift the head up and wipe down the head using the side of the Q-tip with uh, isopropyl alcohol. And then I use the other side to wipe the head dry. I actually leave the drive out like this for a week to give the belt time to stretch before testing it. I then test the drive using a real laptop and see that it was successfully able to read a disc. The drive being so old was a bit flaky and I had to hold it down for it to work properly. But it works so I shut everything down and return to reassembling the drive. put the top cover back on, uh, basically in reverse order from the way I took it off. Now that the top cover is on, I put it back in its case. This is just aligning the tabs and snapping them back into place. I also put the broken tab back in. We're done. Now newer USB floppy drives don't have the same belt and so there's not the need to replace them and I'm gonna show you one here. Hope this helps.